But Mr. Dooley, what's the analysis? Gentlemen, we're in the second half of this unit, so we've done division, and we're now jumping into exile. We've got three rather quick uh, lessons here, so I'll be posting the according videos. Uh, this first lesson will be back in the history narrative of Second Kings, going over the fall of the kingdom. Without further ado, let's begin in prayer. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, as we begin to look at the exile of the Jewish people, the kingdoms of Israel and Judah, help us to reflect in our own lives how you are always present, even in the most, and especially in the most catastrophic events of our lives. Your loving hand continues to sustain us and guide us. Lord, Help us to freely choose your will above all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So a quick video today. We're going to cover the basics, help you guys hit the objective. Um, today's lesson is called The Fall of Two Kingdoms. Two Kings 17 to 25 is our content focus. Our objective is to articulate the factors leading to the fall of Israel and Judah. Now remember that Israel is the ten northern tribes. Israel will also be called Ephraim at this time. The capital is Samaria. There's been nothing but bad kings. In Judah, and along with the tribe of Benjamin, those are the southern two tribes, um, there's been the occasional all right king, but it hasn't been great. For homework, you'll have summarized the fall of Israel, and you'll have summarized the fall of Judah. Um, what I'm going to focus on is articulating the factors that led to this fall. There's religious and there's political and there's an interesting interplay between both that I want to highlight. We're going to continue on with the Sushape this unit. Our unit goal has slightly shifted as we enter the exile. We're going to evaluate the significance of the exile for the Israelite consciousness. So what does it mean to be an Israelite in exile? What is going on in their minds is our question. Uh, our unit question will be phrased as, what did the exile do to the mindset of the chosen people? And how does that have significance for us today? Gentlemen, up until this point, we've been following the single thread of Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Joshua, Judges, into the book of Samuel, the books of Kings. It's been a single thread. With the exile, things have already fractured into two kingdoms. But in terms of the narrative now, we're going to have a lot more books that suddenly start popping up. This time period of exile is suddenly when we have many books we're hearing from different prophets we're hearing from different writers we're hearing different historical periods or historical reflections like the book of chronicles which looks back on the book of kings um, so this did stuff this event this exile that we're going to talk about will do stuff that we can see today has a literary effect they suddenly started writing about all these different events that were going on here's where we are in terms of our map um, we're in the baby blue because Israel and Judah uh, will be singing the baby blues up in, uh, in their respective exiles. Uh, as you can see right here, these are all supplementary books. Suddenly it just explodes. We go from having one solid narrative, one book at a time, to just many books all at once. So clearly this is an enormously significant event written about from multiple angles. Um, here is Israel in the northern kingdom. They'll, they're going to disappear. Uh, Jerusalem, the capital of Judah, the southern kingdom, they'll continue on before going into a later exile before coming back. All right, so let's dive in. Here are your guided questions. The exit ticket for this unit um, will be a uh, Socratic seminar in the context of the unit question. So rather than a formal written one, we're just going to have a Socratic seminar um, this could potentially change, so I might actually have you guys write this down, but for now I'm just planning on doing a Socratic seminar and listening in. However, big asterisks on this could be changed as of uh, the first class. I will decide game time decision. All right, Second Kings. Uh, the relevant chapters are chapter 17, chapter 24, and chapter 25. Chapter 17 will highlight the fall of Israel, so the northern kingdom. And Hoshea, different than Hosea, Hoshea will rule over Israel, and the sins of Israel will lead to deportation. And Assyria will resettle Samaria. So basically, we have the Assyrian Empire will come down, and 
they'll wipe out everyone important and take out the political structures of the kings of the north. And they will eventually, over time, mix with the people uh, to create the Samaritans, who will be very important in Jesus' day. Uh, so they are a mixed people. Uh, chapters 18 through 23 are super complicated and definitely above our objectives. We just want to cover, well, articulate the causes. What do we mean by articulate the causes? Um, how did this happen? Now, why did the north fall to Assyria? Well, simply put, Assyria was a hugely powerful empire at the time. So it makes sense that a smaller, less structured empire would get eaten up in this. Furthermore, we already know that when we read Hosea, and we read we mentioned it maybe once or twice before that even, that Israel was paying tribute to other nations, including Assyria, including Egypt, and all this stuff. And they end up, in some ways, worshipping the other nations. So it makes sense that they would fall historically. Uh, so first factor is big empire eats up smaller empires. Second is smaller empire was already trying to gain favor with the bigger one and ends up getting taken over. Now, we're moving towards the more symbolic representation or the religious interpretation. Uh, and this is the one that will be key in the prophets is the exile is a result of sin. The exile is a result of sin. Turning away from God will lead to political uh, exile and historical exile. In this case, with the north, it's going to lead to them being wiped out. They're going to be wiped off the face of the earth. At least the northern kingdoms will disappear and the ten northern tribes will disappear. Skipping forward to chapter 24, let's talk about the south. Now, the south will continue on, the north will disappear. The south will continue on a few more years. Uh, however, in chapter 24, Judah southern kingdom with its capital Jerusalem will be overrun by its enemies, specifically Babylon, another huge, huge, huge empire that hopefully you learned a little bit about in world history. Uh, we're going to learn a lot more about in this unit, the empire of Babylon. They'll conquer Jerusalem, and what they will do, they won't wipe everyone out. Rather, they'll do a smart political move. They will take the cream of the crop of the people of Jerusalem and Judah, so the political elites, the political, religious, financial, economic, etc., they'll take the religious elites and all of the elites and they'll deport them. So they'll bring them back to Babylon. Ironically, who's from that Babylon area, Ur of the Chaldeans? Abraham. So they'll get deported, the elites, the people who are carrying the culture, will get deported back to um, where their great 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 grandfather Abraham is from and they'll be hanging out there and so the rest of the unit will examine them but you need to know that most people most Jews in that day were left in the land they were left in Babylon however these were the farmers the people who were uneducated just the regular ordinary folks and so they lost touch with the books of Moses the culture the religious practices furthermore the Babylonians will not just exile the elites, stealing away their ability to transmit culture. They'll destroy the temple that Solomon built. And this will have an enormous, enormous consequence on the Israelite con uh, consciousness because their center of worship will be destroyed. It would be like the nation's capital, the nation's economic center, and the nation's religious center being destroyed in one day. Imagine this. Vatican City, the Empire State Building, and the White House and the Capitol Building destroyed all in one day because the temple was the religious, political, and spiritual um, center. It was economic as well, center of the southern kingdom. So the historical view of the causes is quite st simple and straightforward. You have two large empires conquering two smaller empires. That's a purely historical view of things. You can add in the additional factors of paying tribute, kind of cavorting with the enemy, and they get eaten up. That makes sense. You learn about that in Santana's class, absolutely. However, from the religious point of view, and this is from the Jewish consciousness themselves. Why did they think they went into exile? Yes, they realized the historical view of the powerful empire eats up the small empire. However, they also connected to their own spiritual failure, recognizing that it was things like idolatry, things like immorality, by whoring themselves out to the other nations, by forgetting their true spouse, that is God, they end up in exile. And the strange thing 
about the Jews is that they see both. They see history both as a play of empires, but also as God's story being written and their own part in it. This is this fascinating idea that when we articulated the significance of Jacob wrestling, when we looked at, we took apart that narrative of wrestling with God and man, the Jews are going to see both factors. It's a both and. They see the natural historical factors, but also the religious narrative going on. So that's what I'm going to leave you. We have a lot of engagement to do in class, but that's where I'll leave you for duly analysis. Thanks. God bless, gentlemen. See you soon.